what happens when you change the temperature? Now, this reaction right here, I say to you, okay, we've got this reaction occurring at equilibrium right now, and we add heat to it. We warm it up. We change the temperature. We increase the temperature. Which way does it shift? Well, you've got to know something about this reaction. You have to know what the delta H is. And so for this reaction, and by the way, I like to ask my students this, this one, uh, that, this question for this reaction here because this one is easy to find the delta H for. And you're going to say, well, chem guy, doesn't that involve doing that products minus reactants thing to calculate delta H? Yep, except for one thing. This is the heat, well, this is a reaction of the formation of NH3 from its elements. And when it forms from its elements, you just look up on a chart for the molar heat of formation of that chemical. By the way, it's about negative 46. So for two moles, it's about negative 92. I don't care about that kilojoule number as a number. What I care about is the sign. The sign is a negative, which means it's an exothermic heat of formation, which means then, that heat is written as a product, right? So it's an exothermic heat of formation reaction. If that's the case, listen to this. I just said you change the temperature of this reaction by adding heat to it so it warms it up. Now, what does that do? Well, now look, if you're going to add heat to this reaction, treat heat like it's just a chemical. And so remember, if you add something to this side, this side gets jealous. So when you add heat, the reaction shifts to the left. That's exactly what it does. It just shifts to the left. For this reaction right here, adding heat makes it shift to the left. If you cooled the reaction vessel, what would happen? That means you're removing heat. And if you take heat away, the reaction shifts to the right to make more heat. But it also will make a more ammonia. <laughs> so here's the thing. In the Haber process, to make ammonia for fertilizer, you actually want to have a situation where you can pump in more reactant all the time to continually make product, and then you want the reaction to be relatively cool. And that doesn't mean cold, because if you just think, oh, well, just keep making it colder, 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 we'll get to absolute zero, and then it'll be really, really cold, and it'll really shift to the right, and no, molecules need certain activation energies to be, uh, to be reached, right? And so if you slow down the collisions here, you're going to slow down the, the rate of the reaction pretty soon. So the deal is, this reaction actually occurs quite nicely at about 500 degrees Celsius, which still sounds warm, but it's not 2,000 and 3,000 degrees Celsius, which is how a lot of industrial reactions take place. So that's relatively cool in, in uh, comparison. So now here's the thing. We know which way things will shift. We just treat heat like a chemical, but... When we change the temperature, we change the K value. Now, why is that? So let's go back and say, we add heat to this reaction, what happens? Now look, if you add heat, you know that the reaction shifts to the left, which means this goes down, this goes up, this goes up. And there's no other compensatory factor here for being able to shift the reaction and then keeping K the same. The deal is this, when you change the temperature, the K value changes. Now what happens? How, how, how does this change again? If you add heat, the reaction shifts to the left, this goes down, these go up, so the K value is going to become smaller because the numerator became smaller. I don't even look at the denominator, just look at the numerator. If you're shifting away from this because you're adding heat, the NH3 goes down, if that goes down, that means the K value goes down. K value goes down in an exothermic reaction when you add heat. Now look, a lot of students want to memorize, okay, well, if it's an exothermic reaction and I take away heat, then the reaction shifts to the right, and that means that the K value is going to do what? Well, it's going to increase. Yeah, right. But don't memorize everything. Just set it up and think about it. There's nothing to memorize here. There's everything to learn, okay? So now, for an example. Now, look, I know this isn't true for this question, and you know that, right? But here's what I'm doing. I'm just saying, if this was endothermic, and you removed heat, what would the effect be? The reaction would shift to the left. What happens to the K value? Does it change? Yes, because you're changing the temperature. And so if you remove heat, the reaction shifts to the left. What's happening to the product in the numerator? It's decreasing. That means the K value goes down. Just set it up and think about it, and that'll be fine.